Hey guys, welcome to History Ride. I'm David. Today we'll be taking a ride on an expert of engineering you haven't heard a lot about, and that is engineering technical drawings and how it features in our daily life. Today we'll be going to the history of this fascinating and innovative practice that has made constructing and building much easier and working our way up to the modern 3D designs of technical drawings. What are engineering drawings and what makes them so essential? According to Wikipedia, an engineering drawing is a type of a drawing that is used to convey information about an object. Hmm, okay, then what's technical drawing? Also, according to Wikipedia, a technical drawing or drafting is the act and discipline of composing drawings that visually communicate how something functions or is constructed. Okay, now let's say it affects our daily life. Actually, from designing a toy that keeps the kids off your hair and lets you get some sleep, to the breathtaking skyscrapers that beautify the skylines of modern cities around the world today, and to flying meta birds, yes, meta bird that takes us from our vacation destination and back to work. Pretty sad, right? Going back to work. Well, so basically anything that is made in the 21st century has to be designed and tested to make sure it all fits before production or the next phase can begin. Not sounding as brief as I said, right? Don't worry, stick around, you might hear or learn something new. For better understanding, we're going to break it down to the five categories that best showcase each milestone that engineering drawing have come. Perspective drawing technique. Descriptive geometry, orthographic projection technique, 2D card systems, and 3D card systems. Enough of the talk, let's get right to it. Perspective drawing technique. In the graphic arts, perspective drawing refers to the representation of an image on a flat surface, like on a piece of paper, which is what some of us were introduced to in grade 3 and beyond. Perspective drawing technique is a basic way of illustrating three-dimensional image as it appears to the human eye. One key feature of perspective drawing technique is that the object gets smaller as the distance from the viewer increases. Three of the most notable forms of linear perspective is the one point, two point and three point perspective. The innovation of linear perspective was key in the development of drawing, which became more noticeable as time passes. Linear perspective helps artists to create a more realistic depth in their drawings by utilizing some set of points and guidelines. Popular artists like Leonardo da Vinci drew designs for mechanical constructions and war machines using perspective sketches and drawings. Descriptive Geometry one really can't talk about the origins of technical and engineering drawings without mentioning the name Gaspar Monge, a mathematician and is generally considered the father of descriptive geometry. While working for the French military as a draftsman in 1765, he developed his first techniques for solving geometric problems and this method was quickly adopted by engineers. Gaspar Monge's method allowed for an imaginary object to be drawn in a way that it can be represented in a 3D model and all geometric aspects of the imaginary object are accounted for in true size to scale and shape and the image can be seen from any position in space. Some we argue that descriptive geometry is the first essential steps towards technical and engineering drawings as we know it today. Autographic Projection Autographic projection was invented in the Industrial Revolution of 1760 to 1840, a period that saw the birth of some notable innovations like the Watt steam engine by Scottish engineer James Watt, and the first typewriter in 1829 by American inventor William Byrd. Although at the time he named it the typographer, pretty weird name, right? All of which saw some form of technical drawings to make them possible. Orthographic projection, sometimes referred to as orthogonal projection, is a means of representing three-dimensional objects in two dimensions. For example, an orthographic projection of a house typically consists of a top view or plan, a front view and one side view, front and side elevations. 2D card systems and 3D card systems 
20th century, World War II, an era when humanity's desire to actually blow up half of the world was prime on its agenda. Think of it, that's not even 100 years ago. But some positives from that era was massive investment in the military to create new airplanes, ships, bombs, and submarines. To better understand this fact, the US for example was spending a whooping 40% of its gross domestic product GDP on the military during World War II, which is a sharp contrast to what it is today at just 3.2%. And to make all of this possible, we had to think of better ways to build and create much more complex designs and structures. Over the years, computing underwent a lot of development, Dr. Patrick Hanrati, the father of CAD and CAM, developed Pronto. Program for Numerical Tooling Operations, the first CNC programming system in 1957. And in 1963, as part of his thesis at MIT, Ivan Sutherland developed a software called Sketchpad, which was the first CAD software to use a totographic user interface. The start of the 1970s saw research slowly turn from 2D to 3D. My stores include Vespris Knob's invention, part and assembly description language by Greer, Lang and Braid, Adam by Dr. Patrick Hanrati, a card software used as a basis for commercial card software systems was released in 1972, and Katia or Katia depending on how you want to pronounce it. Computer-aided three-dimensional interactive application was released in 1977, bringing engineers into the world of 3D modeling. The introduction of Unis workstations in the 1980 was truly revolutionary in the development of cards, and commercially available card systems began to appear in shipbuilding, automobile, and aerospace industries. Just in case you're new to this kind of topic, CAD stands for computer aided design about one year later marked the biggest step for card development with the release of autocad by autodesk running on ibm pcs it was such a huge success that it won the best card product award from pc world magazine in 1986 a title it kept for the next 10 years despite being capable of only 2d drawings up to this point the majority of card designs were still 2d based until the introduction of Pro Engineer. Although Pro Engineer was still based on Unis workstations because PCs were not powerful enough to run it, engineers were now able to set clear parameters, relationships, and features, which was a game changer for engineers at the time. Well, it's interesting to note that Boeing announced in 1988 that it would be designing the Boeing 777 200 using Katia, which was owned by IBM Dassault. The 1990s saw the introduction of PCs that were finally capable of running 3D card software. This led to an inevitable decline of Unis workstations. In 1995, SolidWorks, the first significant modeler for Windows PC, was released and it was a smash hit just two years into its introduction. And the sort system snatched it up for $320 million in 1997. Two years later I saw the release of Autodex Mechanical Desktop, which was its first 3D solid modeling product, which quickly became the number one best-selling 3D card system in the world, which was followed by the release of Autodex Inventor in 1999, just before the start of a brand new century. The 21st century saw the transition of card software towards the more internet and cloud-based systems kicking off with the introduction of Alibri Design in 2000 and was the first 3D card software that was able to perform client server 3D modeling on the internet. And this was followed by the release of AutoCAD 2000i, which continued Autodesk's success as the most sought after card software in the world. The next decade has seen growth of other card platforms such as Creo, Blender, Revit, SolidWorks and lots, lots more. So friend, that's all for today. I hope you learned something or if you did not and someone managed to laugh at my really lame jokes, do me one back by hitting the subscribe button. We've got tons of new and interesting topics coming your way. If you made it the end of this video, wow, I'm proud of you. You've done your good deed for the day. 
Oh, don't forget to comment, like, share. It's David from History. Thanks for taking a ride with us today and goodbye.